All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Delanco Township Committee meeting, October 18th, 2021. This is via Zoom remote access, normally held at the Delanco Municipal Building 770 Cooperstown Road in Delanco. Uh, roll call, please, Mrs. Lohr. Mr. Brown. Here. Mrs. Patrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Lett. Here. Mr. Templeton. Here. Uh, also present, as I said, Mr. Schwab is unable to attend this evening. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Laura, Municipal Clerk, Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. Uh, let's see, Chief uh, DeSanto, and we have Aaron Provenzano, our technical expert. And we have, uh, I think that's it. Uh, flag salute, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. Uh, Sunshine statement, Mrs. Lord. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County, County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. Written notice, notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. This meeting is via a Zoom remote platform. Um, the advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. And all advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the public, published public meeting start time. The uh, members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting's public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option. The um, comments and questions submitted via the chat function during the time when the meeting is officially open to the public will be read and the Zoom chat function will be available when the meeting is open to the public for comments and questions and will otherwise be disabled during the meeting. Members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive may be muted and after initial warning um, for the duration of the public comment session or the remainder of the remote meeting session. The agenda for this meeting is available on the township website at zelenkotownship.com. Thank you, Mayor. All right, uh, let's see. Meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions. This is session one of two sessions uh, for the public comment this evening. Please state your name and address. Uh, and to start off, Mrs. Lord, or do we have any advanced comments or anything? I do not have advanced comments. All right. Any questions or comments from the public for session one? <clears throat> Just make sure, um, Aaron, are we, uh, is the chat function enabled? Yes, it's on. Okay, so anyone wishing to uh, uh, make a comment or have a question, um, please uh, identify yourself, uh, your name and address, and or you can type that into the chat function. We've had some requests come in to give a little bit more time as people are trying to type, because before you were able to type it in advance, now with it being disabled and only being enabled right when the meetings open to the public, people are requesting a little bit more time to be able to type in their chat. So, but right now I have, there's nothing in the chat function okay. for this session one. All right. Hearing and seeing no comments from the public, I'll close this session one for public comment at this time. Uh, comments and reports, uh, let's see. Department heads, we'll start off, we'll start off with uh, Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to follow up on some items. Um, I told you last meeting that uh, there was uh, starting to grow concern about the crosswalks that are going to be painted on Coopertown Road. They have since uh, been uh, painted. I did get a correspondence uh, regarding that, uh, that they did confirm from the county that they would be painted and that the uh, contractor would be doing it, and not the county. And uh, sure enough, uh, before this meeting, they, they did do that. I inquired about the other crosswalks that Mr. Uh, Oled has asked about, and they have indicated that that's scheduled for 2022. And as part of a 
different correspondence in reference to Ms. Fitzpatrick. Uh, we've uh, had correspondence with the county talking about the pedestrian crossing specifically at Franklin Street and Vine Street. Um, they were supposed to uh, do some their own evaluation of the area and they did get back to me and uh, they said that uh, in regards to the, the second pedestrian crossing of Vine Street, they have not come to determination to eliminate that completely. That That's still uh, in the process of being evaluated. And then all the um, crosswalks, including them um, and the one on Franklin Street will be repainted as well as the other ones on Burlington Avenue in their overlay plan for 2022. Also I'd like to throw this note in there that we received a uh, email correspondence from Mr. Schwab about um, a uh, gas line, uh, I guess being uh, repaired or actually I guess uh, being a new gas line being put in. So I don't know what area that's gonna be on Brownton Avenue. It just indicated Brownton Avenue and we're supposed to have a Zoom meeting to find out. Uh, Mr. Fox had responded as well. So, so I don't know if this is gonna affect this area as well. So that may be a bigger delay if it's involving that particular area of Burlington Avenue, just to keep you in mind. Um, in regards to the, uh, you know, them uh, assisting with any kind of paint marks in regards to the 25 feet from the pedestrian crossing, they said that they normally don't do that, but when they do their repainting of the pedestrian crossings on Franklin Street and Vine Street, they will put some type of hash marks uh, for the 25 feet rule. And, uh, but anything further than 25 feet uh, will be our responsibility in terms of one, an ordinance and then painting it. And so um, that kind of brings me to my second part of my report. Ms. Fitzpatrick asked me to try to take a look at that crossing and and uh, see if there's a, well, she believes there's a need to go even further and how what kind of impact that would have. Obviously we would lose uh, parking. And if we did it at both uh, places, um, you know, basically in front of uh, Blue's Deli and in front of the ice cream bar, where we're gonna lose is one parking spot in each. Um, because soon as we go, even if we only get five, 10 feet further than the 25, we start encroaching in the next parking spot. Uh, so, so whether we go the max of 19 feet additional, or we go five feet, it's basically gonna knock out that, that parking spot that's um, within that 20 foot, foot, 25 foot barrier in either place. The, uh, the pros of that is obviously more, more opportunity, more clearance, but I did notice that what it's gonna do in front of Lou's specifically is that uh, expansion is just gonna remain, there's a handicapped parking spot on Burlington Avenue and the vehicle that uses that most of the time is a resident that lives on uh, that block of Burlington Avenue and they have an SUV, a smaller SUV but it's it's an SUV, so that actually sits higher than the car that sit you know ha, that's in front of it currently, so it's not going to be the biggest bang in the buck um, if we remove that uh, car that's in front of it because you still got to have the visual impairment of the SUV. So there, so it wouldn't be the the best if it was a car being parked in that handicapped spot. It would definitely be a huge impact. But with that SUV, there's still uh, some potential for some obstruction, but um, it would improve. But the, the the case is, do we want to cause any more problems with the parking issues on Burlington Avenue? The people struggle as it is because that one side is, um, you know, the west side of Burlington Avenue. No, I shouldn't say no. There's very few off street parking for them, and so they end up parking on Burlington Avenue or Franklin Street. So the um, safety wise, yes, it would be improvement. And I would say a slight improvement. And uh, we would have to pass the ordinance indicating that those two particular corners, we are gonna expand it beyond 20 feet. And we would specifically say, my recommendation would be, you know, to expand it, you know, 40 feet for each, each one, give it another 15 feet. And then um, we would, 
we would have some additional uh, sight lines for people standing, coming off the corner. The perfect remedy, which is an expense, and uh, you know, unless the county ever decided to do it, is put out a what they I think they call it a push out or bulb out, where you actually have the sidewalk extend into Burlington Avenue. So it so uh, somebody parking there couldn't drive straight through. They would have to, you know, back up and pull out. But that pedestrian would be beyond the parked cars. That is the most uh, safest way to do it. But you know, like I said, there, there's an expense. So that that's the benefit. Um, you know, you have to weigh the analysis of whether how upset the residents are going to be on Burlington Avenue. Um, once again, communication. I would I would say if we go down that venture, we probably should at least give them notice that there's going to be a meeting about that. And um, so you guys can get their input and, and, and see how they feel about it. Uh, some of the residents that park there are the ones who are, you know, believing this is a major issue. So, you know, they may be willing to sacrifice and, and we might go a little bit easier than, than we think. I do note this, and, and the county even said this in the email, and, I, and I've seen it, you know, a few times. People are using a pedestrian crossing, but they are not pushing the button. So yes. I, I don't know if we want to go back to the county and ask them to have it, um, I guess, a, a triggered motion trigger. Uh, but people are just not pushing the button that I've seen. Um, when I've been on patrol the last week, I worked last weekend. I worked this week at nights, and then I worked Saturday during the day. And I saw three people and none of them pushed the button. They did use the crosswalk, um, but that would definitely help if somehow we can get them to push the button to activate that light. Um, so that's that's the general census of that. You, uh, If you ask any questions or get any feedback before I move on, if you would like to start going that adventure, the county did indicate that all we need to do uh, they'd have no no issue with us ex extending that new parking area off those crosswalks. Uh, they just said, uh, just uh, you know, when you pass the ordinance, just send it to them, and they'll do a concurring resolution, and and then uh, you know we can we can have the curb painted all the way yellow for the for the forty feet at both places. So I don't think there's no pushback from the county on this. So you're saying it'd be you'd be losing two parking spaces at each crosswalk. Uh, one at each one. One, 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 at, each. one at each. I, I think it's necessary because, well, I've had enough complaints about it, but I have seen some some people using the light and cars have gone through with the flashing lights even. Because um, I, I kind of went back and forth. Because it's coming from Riverside where the site view is really poor. And uh, one of the residents that, Parks on Burlington Avenue was the first resident who contacted me. Now I've had somebody else uh, contact me regarding some kids that were trying to cross and just couldn't get across. And you can't see the people in the crosswalk with well, some of the cars that park there. So I believe that there's plenty of parking on Franklin and there's also plenty of parking on um, Vine Street for some extra for an extra vehicle or two to park there but safety is is really a concern and i don't know uh, i did get a somebody text me i think let's say phil mcfadden texted me and said can that flashing light be red instead of yellow i don't know if that can no, they, they won't make it red no. i didn't think so yeah. um it people have asked could we put a light there um it, they're not going to put a street light there, obviously, where you actually stop traffic. Uh, they're also going to put a crosswalk at the bridge, coming right across the bridge, across to Burlington, uh, to Rancocas. Oh, that's the crazy. The Heritage Trail is going to be, because that's where they're crossing the trail. The Rancocas, yeah, uh, yeah that's, that, that's where that trail is. So I asked about that, too. So that is going to be a crosswalk right there, which is, that's gonna be really dangerous because those cars coming across the bridge, uh, it's 30, 30 mile speed limit now, and some of them are going faster than that. And then all of a sudden they hit the Lanco and they have to slow down. But 
I feel it's a safety issue and that we yeah, should we, move forward we're, with we're, it. Now, now the parking, the, you know, I've, I've asked about this for a couple of years now at, at that crosswalk because the, the parking spot is right up against the crosswalk and that was never painted out. And the argument well, was, they just painted out crosswalk, uh, the, uh, the yellow, they just got painted just yeah. in the last day or two. But yeah. um, that one car that oh, parked oh, oh. right so up that to first, so that is, first parking is, spot is blocked out at both of those crosswalks now. No, no that what, what it is right now at, at Burlington and Franklin in front of Lou's Deli, there's a sign that says no parking here at the corner. That sign is 25 feet from the right. front of the crosswalk, but, and no one parks. But the asphalt that sign, the pavement, it, the asphalt's not painted out. Correct. The, the the curb isn't painted all the way out to that sign, but the sign is there, and I haven't seen anybody park beyond that sign. Well, there's always right. every time you're trying to lose Delhi. Someone park there on the, right up against that crosswalk. Um, uh, no, it's the, the, it looks like it's parked right against the crosswalk, but that one car, it's a beige car that parks in front of the handicapped spot is there every day and every yeah. night. They are parked legally. They right are up parked against, right, yeah. right to the sign. And with the curb that was just painted, they're parked right to it. So that car would be eliminated. All right. Which would so, help. I, I'd like um, to comment. Uh, you know, when we initiated this crosswalk lighting, we, we did it to protect ourselves as a township. We gave the residents of that area safe haven to cross. If if they're not pushing the button or they're still crossing in the middle of the street, uh, that's on them, not us. We've given them uh, a lovely crosswalk, and I, I see it constantly that people are crossing in the middle of the block everywhere. They're, they're walking through these crosswalks, looking at, staring at their telephones. I don't, you know, that they're still driving in their car, looking down at their cell phones. All we can do as a local board is just make these ordinances and laws and uh, hope that they pay attention. I think the crosswalk will catch on. Just be patient. It's there, though. We've, we've done our job. We put it there. It's not sufficient, John. I'm sorry. Coming from it's Riverside. What? Not Even what? if you're going to Franklin, go, go further to Franklin, coming from Riverside, you cannot see, there is no light there, you cannot see anybody in that crosswalk because the vehicles are parked too close to it. And they're parked legally. And uh, so well, I think- what, what, what the chief proposed was to take out that second parking spot to improve yeah, the Yeah, I, I would mean, take it out. What's, it's, it's a simple question. None yeah. of us wants to be here on a Monday night trying to explain why so there was a fatality there or a bad injury because exactly. someone was bad. So let's uh, let's move in that direction as the chief proposed. We'll we'll put it out for public discussion that uh, that's the direction we appear to be moving in. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. All right. Well, I'll get uh, I'll get working with I don't know if you with Doug or Janice about you know extending that. Both of them, instead of being 25 feet, to be 40 feet, to give it another 15 feet. And, um, you know, the ice cream bar, you know, like I said, um, they'll be part of the input because they're going to lose parking for their business. And um, so there, there is going to be some unintended consequences. But the balance of it, if they're the ones that are asking for it, then then they'll be cooperative and and understand. Now, Chief, is that could be on both sides of Burlington at those crosswalks? No, there's, no, there's parking. no parking on the other side. On the other side. Right. Yeah. The um, the area would be uh, 40 feet. And this is the feet I'm telling you is from the front of the crosswalk. The you know, the the crosswalk which is closest to Beverly. So you measure the front and you measure back. And um, you can't go any further than 44 feet. You go further than 44 feet. In front of Loose Deli, you're encroaching in that handicap spot. Okay. So I, I just rather make it a round number, make it 40 feet. All right. And then um, and move pick up the sign. It's there. It says here, new parking here at the corner. It says pick up the sign, move it down, re you know, reestablish it, paint the curb all the way down to that sign. And then uh, they started painting the curb uh, in front of the ice cream bar. And we would just need to paint that curb another another 15 feet and 
maybe throw a sign up there as well. It says, you know, parking here at the corner. Well, and then, what uh, we're doing that stripe the, the asphalt. So it's, it's a block. Well, I mean, that the, the county said they would do up to 25 feet. Um, I don't know if you want to wait and see what they do, but I don't know if Mr. Fenimore has the capability. He would have to probably go out to uh, Willingbar and yeah. ask them to stripe it out. So I don't know if we want to right. do that or just just concentrate on the easy parts, painting yeah. the curb yellow, putting the sign up, and good and you know getting the ordinance passed first, and then then doing that. Okay, that's that's good. A chief, uh, this is for a uh, question yeah. up by the ice cream uh, bar. Both sides of Vine on on uh, closest to the ice cream shop. There's parking on both sides of that section of the street. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the uh, Holly Street uh, resident contacted me about the 300 block asking for uh, uh, lighting. I looked at it and I agree that lighting's needed, but I need to reach out to public service and see what the current rate is. If we would add a light, there's a there's existing pole there. So um, let me uh, reach out to them and see what the uh, amount is going to be to add a light street lamp. And I'll get back to you next meeting and, and advise you what the cost is. And you can make a determination whether you still want to proceed with adding a street light on uh, Holly Street. Um, so is the committee ready to have an ordinance prepared for the uh, extended no parking and then have that um, reviewed at the next meeting? While when Doug is there, I'm ready. I'm ready. Any comment, uh, Fern or Chris? Uh, I agree with the uh, the extended uh, no parking section. Uh, I experienced the same thing. I pushed the button. This was on Saturday uh, to cross there, and uh, the flight lights flashing. There was a vehicle parked there, uh, but the oncoming traffic from Riverside. Uh, I guess really didn't pay attention to the to the flashing light. They went through, and then after that, the next car as I started to uh, step into the crosswalk, uh, they came finally came to a stop. But um, yes, I think the added visibility would be beneficial. And then up by the ice cream shop, uh, again with as many kids that cross over that section up there at Vine, uh, I think the added visibility would be helpful. So I'm in agreement. I disagree. I think that the business owners should be contacted and be made aware of this. Uh, as a small business owner on Burlington Avenue, your on-street parking is very crucial. Uh, it's a shop and go society. People do want to pull right up, get out, and get take care of their business. Um, I Like I said, I think we've done a lot on that strip. We took the houses now going on the corner, which enables a great uh, site triangle. And uh, you know, you're always going to have problems with people crossing the street and not paying attention. Uh, but, you know, I think 40 feet is a little extreme. Stick with the 25. John, I would just like to make a comment to what you said is that the people that are parking there are not customers of Lou's Deli or the ice cream bar. They're residents that live in that area and they can move around the corner uh, or park back a little further. They're not those parking places where the people are having trouble crossing in their sight line. Those cars are parked there all the time. Same cars. Um, it, it's not going to interfere with the business. Lou has plenty of parking on the side and so does the ice cream bar. They have more parking on the side street than you have in your parking lot. So I just wanted to make that comment that they usually aren't stop and go patrons that park there. Well, we can go as the, the direction the chief suggested was have a kind of a, an airing out of this uh, announced that uh, that's our consideration at the at the first November meeting and 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 decide to, uh, you know, just give the uh, the businesses and the residents, uh, you know, the, to hear them out. So Chris. Yeah, I, I just on this issue, I, I side with John, I, I have the the benefit of having a driveway, right? But a lot of those people that are parking on Burlington Ave live across the street. So 
they've already got the added challenge of having to park across the street, then crossing. And I think moving them down further in the side streets just is, is, isn't fair. Um, so I think with the addition of the crosswalk and the improved sight line, I think at the end of the day, people just need to take a little ownership and cross as safely as they can. I think we can't bubble wrap everybody in this town. We just need to trust that they're gonna use the, the tools that we've given them. Well, I think I think you're missing the point because the point is coming from Riverside with those vehicles so parked so close to the crosswalk, you can't see somebody in it. You cannot see the person in it. And maybe maybe you and John should take a couple rides back and forth from Riverside down to past the ice cream bar and see what I'm talking about because I made several trips to see it. And it is not a good sight line. Coming from the other part of Delanco towards Riverside, the sight line is much clearer because you're coming, you're on the other side of the street. Uh, uh, so that's my, my point. Um, but I think, um, I think it's necessary for the safety of the residents. Let's uh, put it on as a discussion, a uh, public discussion for the, uh, the first November meeting and uh, we'll hold off on ordinance preparation uh, based on that outcome. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. Yes. All right, we'll go that route. Anything else, Chief? Yes. Um, also, is, there, is a, there is an issue, it comes and goes, about the vehicles parking on Burlington Avenue on the west side. Uh, between, um, I would say, Magnolia and Hazel. Um, it's really, you know, I narrowed it down to probably, I think it's two residents. Uh, they keep on um, parking. There's parking permitted on Burlington Avenue in those areas. When they repaved, the last time we repaved Burlington Avenue, the shoulder used to be big enough to accommodate vehicles, but now it's really not big enough to accommodate vehicles. So because there's parking's legal, what they do is, they get the right side tires up over the curb and keep their um, vehicle within the white line, which, uh, you know, for safety reasons, that's a good thing, but then there's the potential damage to the planting strip. So it's a, um, you know, it, it could be cause a problem down the road because utility lines and so forth are underneath there. So I was asked to, to look at that and and um, when you look at the parking statutes, there's only one that comes kind of close to say what they're violating. So I, you know, I addressed it with warnings uh, this past week. And actually, so far, if anybody else has, you know, seen it since, the last uh, occasion I had, I think it was Thursday night was the last warning I issued, and I haven't seen it reoccur since then. Um, so they heeded the warning to, to this point. The next step would be to, um, you know, write them tickets, which I'm waiting for the prosecutor to let me know if, if he believes that the ticket would hold up for this one statute. Or the next step would be to eliminate that parking just to do to the shoulders just too narrow in those particular areas. Now, and it, the odd thing is it's not like that on Burlington Avenue the entire length. There's sections where, like, you know, up where John's business is, where it's more than wide enough. And there's sections of Burlington Avenue prior to that, where it's more than wide enough to accommodate vehicles um, without them extending into the operating lane. So I say, let's see if this works. That's my recommendation. Let me see if, if they start repeating themselves. Um, because this is the first time we actually put a notice of a violation on their cars. And um, I, I know the one vehicle has not returned. And then I hadn't seen the second vehicle. I worked, I worked Saturday during the day and I didn't see that vehicle back to that area. So, so that's something we might have to address long-term if the prosecutor comes back and says, that statute is just not gonna hold up in court because that's not the intent of the statute. You know, uh, reading the statute, it's a technical violation. When you take the words verbatim, it's, it's uh, what they're doing is a violation, but someone can easily, a judge could say, well, I interpret that as they really meant 
the actual right side of the vehicle being six inches from the curb, meaning being six inches from the right side of the curb, not um, not the other side of the curb. So, but that, I just wanted to make you aware of that we're trying to we're trying to address it, and we'll, we'll see. Unless you guys want to start preparing another ordinance for no parking, we can go that route. But I would no, say give me no. a chance and see see if this uh, warning worked, and then. Um, and let me get back feedback from the prosecutor. I'm waiting for him to get back to me and let you know if this uh, statute would hold up in court. Yeah, no, continue what you're doing. And that seems to be effective. I mean, all those, I'm looking at a Google Earth shot of that section. I mean, all those properties have driveways off Burlington. You know, yeah, the, this, we dealt with this a couple of years ago and the warning seemed to work a couple of years ago, if you remember. Yeah, was, actually, a couple of years ago, we did, Kate, was we, we just actually talk to the people. Yeah. And I guess they just, you know, as time goes on with anything else, people, you know, figure it's okay. So right. I actually issued, you know, they look like tickets, but there are warnings and I put them in the windshield. So, you know, and with the violation on there. So, you know, thinking uh, that I, would I, make them think a little more and this is serious enough to where they can get a ticket. I tell you, I've yeah. lived a long time on this road, and uh, I don't think there's anybody that wants to park on Burlington Avenue because we sure have seen a lot of cars get hit on Burlington Avenue. Uh, parked cars flipped mm -hmm. over in my in my lifetime. Yeah. So I don't think anybody really wants to be there. No, it no, does it's seem a that we can't move that. We can't move that line over uh, just a little bit, Jesse. Um, I mean, the county, whatever their engineering. It always seemed to me that you have um, all that, all the you have a bike lane in the other side, and you got not enough parking on street for the other side. But yeah. I agree, they all have parking. But um, uh, did you say from Magnolia to Hazel? Yeah, that's, that's what I would do. I mean, I I, I checked every run. year, and it's tight uh, between yeah. Peachtree and Lilac. It, it is it is super tight, and and uh, I I wouldn't recommend somebody parking there. You know what I mean? Um, no, I, I know a car I, could probably barely fit, but you get a pickup truck, a larger SUV, the only way they're going to fit within that white line is if they hop that curb. They got to um, hop the curb. I went all down, I think it was Wednesday night, I went all down Burlington Avenue on that west side to see where it was nice and comfortable, where you actually had inches between the white line and your tire. And, um, and basically, that's where I came down to. Magnolia, Magnolia to Hazel. So. Get or, smaller cars. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the problem. I think cars are bigger. This, the one car that somebody sent me a picture of was one of those little mini Coopers. Yeah, yeah. And it was I'll half on that. the grass and half yeah. on the street. <laughs> I can't, I mean, they, they don't want to get sideswiped, like John said, you know what I mean? They, yeah, I know. Oh. I'm only. Uh, I think. I think, oh, myself and uh, Township Solicitor is working on a ordinance to include all the handicapped parking for semi-public areas. Um, Mr. McFadden asked me about the Field of Dreams. We were getting ready to send officers out there to start enforcing a handicapped parking when I realized it was never included or updated in the code. So I went around and um, there was a couple businesses in there that don't exist, or I should say changed names, but there the, the handicap parking is associated with the business name. So we, we've uh, revised the handicap parking added Pennington Park. That wasn't in there. We've added um, uh, the uh, Field of Dreams and uh, we, we're changing the wording on the association of the existing handicap parking that was in the uh, code. So you, you're gonna see that coming shortly. Right. That, and that is it. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We don't, Mr. Fenimore's not in. And Mrs. Lohr, anything in administration? Uh, yes. We received the um, notice uh, and sub grantee agreement for this community development block grant. Um, so we now have the authorization to proceed. So the township committee um, should look to authorizing the township engineer to move forward with getting that um, project specs ready uh, to go out to bid so that we're ready for the spring uh, for the CDDB project because there is a deadline.
deadline on uh, completing that in order to not have any penalties of, on, on funding. The second thing is that um, we had the shredding event this uh, past Saturday, along with the community cleanup day at Public Works. And we had approximately 56 cars bringing um, different quantities of sh uh, material for shredding. And also uh, we combine that with the uh, township uh, records that have been authorized by the state of New Jersey that are uh, past their retention uh, schedule. Uh, that was very successful. Um, I would like to have the township committee's uh, permission, if it's how you want to proceed, uh, to post the RFPs for professional services for 2022. And that would be uh, everything from your engineer, attorney, uh, planners, auditors, uh, and so forth, including the planning board, the joint land use board. Um, we traditionally, the committee has traditionally done it through a professional RFP, which we post on our website. We receive those RFPs uh, the beginning of December for your, before your first meeting in December uh, for consideration for 2022 appointments. So I am looking uh, for, for that approval and authorization to go ahead and post those for 2022. Any objection to uh, Mrs. Lohr's request? No. 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 All right. All right. And also, too, just as a note, next the next meeting is November 8th, not November 1st, because November 2nd is the general election. So uh, our meeting room is set up the night, the, the day before as a polling place. So the next meeting um, will be November 8th. And uh, the last thing is actually a report on community day, the township had a table and I'm actually gonna let Kitty, cause Kitty did work that and um, uh, man, uh, man that table for the day. So, uh, you know, Kitty, if you'd like to report on um, what people were interested in, what, uh, you know, we were able, information we'll be able to, we were able to provide, that would be great. Um, yes. Um... Residents were mainly interested in the flyers about the shredding event and about community day. Um, we did have people, some people gathered up a lot of information. We did have new residents come uh, who were not familiar with the township calendar. Uh, so they took count township calendars and uh, recycling schedules. So um, we did have quite a few people who were interested in new information and new residents. So we advised them, suggested they could access information on the website, um, tried to encourage them to sign up for email blasts, um, but it, it, was, uh, it was steadily busy, I think, that day. Thank you. And we also have um, our rabies clinic is coming up in November, I believe, uh, November 6th, kidding. Yeah, November 6th, um, yes. and it will be a drive through. We did the drive through last year um, because of COVID, and it was very successful, very well received. The vet liked it that way. So, we are going to continue with a drive through rabies clinic on November 6th. And the time is what, nine to noon or 10 to noon? I don't see it on the calendar. I'm on the township website, and I'm looking for the. Let me see real quick. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we. I think because of the vet, we had to actually change the times for that. I, I have a card. Yeah. Yes. Pet. Let's see. Oh, community calendar. Up here it is. Drive up. Rabies clinic. Nine to eleven. Nine to eleven. Thank yeah. you, Sharon. <laughs> I just got my card. Yes, nine a.m. to eleven, November six. Drive up. Uh, drive through rabies clinic. Anyone with a, a cat or dog with a uh, rabies expiring can take advantage of that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, that's all for department heads. Uh, comments Township Committee. Mrs. Patrick, do you want to start us off? Okay. Um, let's say I attended the history board meeting. Um, we uh, had a new oral history done of Ann Miller, who was a lifelong resident of Delanco until recently. Uh, Steve McLaughlin and his mother, Holly, 
went to CARE 1 and uh, questioned Anne. Um, I did have the opportunity to listen to that uh, interview. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that I thought was really nice or funny actually, uh, because they grew up during the Great Depression, she and her two sisters, uh, Norma Mormon was one of her sisters, her other sister lives in Illinois, that they had swings in their backyard and they traveled all over the world on those swings in their imagination. I thought that was really pretty neat, one of the things she talked about. Um, we're also working on signage for three projects, uh, three properties, 725 Delaware Avenue, 229 Willow Street, and the Russ, Farm, Russ Newton's Farmhouse. Those three signs, we have plans to have them up this year. Um, we discussed suggestions for Juneteenth uh, program for 2022 and the Babe Ruth Day. Uh, we also were working on our upcoming budget for 2022. Uh, community Day, I did attend Community Day. It was a great event. I enjoyed a hot dog and pizza. Dunkin' Donuts apologized for not attending. Somehow they missed the information regarding it. Um, they are going to be setting up a committee next year um, for Community Day to see if they can have more um, tables available to different boards. Uh, there were a lot of children there. They had uh, balloons being made into animals or what have you. And they did, instead of face painting, they painted their um, arms, which was really cute. Uh, I attended the seniors meeting. Uh, Jesse, they're going on a trip Wednesday. It's just a day trip, so on the 20th. So they'll be parking at the municipal building, just so you know that. Okay. They were, um, our, the program was, um, they had Steve Moritz and Dan White uh, playing their guitars, singing folk songs. So we sang along with them. It was really uh, very entertaining. Uh, I went to the sewer authority meeting and we passed our budget resolution. We're still waiting to hear from DEP, DEP on the trunk line project. Uh, the generator backups have been completed on all three locations. Uh, I attended a recreation meeting um, on October 30th. Uh, we're gonna have a drive around town for the best decorated uh, Halloween houses. Carriage rides, the vendors and the tent have been confirmed. Gingerbread houses, registration, and um, we're gonna have that same thing that we did last year where families will register and we will hand them out to families uh, uh, to drive up to the municipal building. Eagle Scout projects to begin at the end of this month, weather permitting. Uh, the Eagle Rehab project is underway. Uh, we're still looking for a location to place it. Uh, and we're hopeful that we can place it inside somewhere. Um, some members of REC met with TLC uh, to see about the uh, reports that they haven't been uh, following through on. There were also issues at the fields, which seem to be resolving. And hopefully the new event lawn will be able to be uh, done as an addition to their contract by way of a change order. We're not sure on that, but they're gonna be working on that. I also attended the cleanup. I uh, always have something to take to the public works garage and shredding. And I, I really enjoy taking my items to be shredded. So. That's it for me. It was a very busy week. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown. You muted, Mr. Brown. I see that. Okay. Uh, I want to make a comment on the event when we discussed it uh, pretty deeply last meeting and um, it seems we got we got rain after that meeting, and I was thinking of that lawn, and I was thinking about what John Fenimore said about the uh, sandy soil. Uh, without beating this up too much, I just hope that we do consider that this event lawn, when discussed, was supposed to be a natural uh, type of uh, field with low maintenance. Um, we really got um, 
ourselves in deep with the field of dreams and recurring maintenance and contracts. And I, I really kind of feel bad that, uh, you know, I was part of it in the beginning and I don't want to see us, uh, get really deep with, uh, event one. I also wondered if the environmental advisory board was tasked with how they would like to see this event lawn be seeded or uh, if they want the use of fertilizers or weed killers, I don't know if they were bought into this, but that would be my request at this time, would, would task the EAB with looking at this, uh, at the problem. Okay. And um, I just, we don't meet again until after the election. I just want to wish uh, all the candidates uh, good luck for the Township Committee and the school board. Uh, it's with a heavy heart that I'm saying goodbye this quarter, uh, but I do trust that the folks involved, you folks and any of the new candidates uh, who uh, take my place, I have a trust in um, to continue the good works. So uh, with that, please get out and vote and uh, see you next month. Thank you. Well done, John. Uh, let's see, um, Ms. Holland. Two tough acts to follow. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, serving with you, John. Um, I have learned a lot and uh, I will miss seeing you in our little Zoom calls until we're back in the, in the building. Um, I, since our last meeting, um, I also attended the uh, the Field of Dreams meeting. Um, I thought the the recap with the contractors, um, going over kind of lessons learned from the past year, uh, was really eye opening and and further evidence of just how thoughtful and devoted our our administration is to making sure that we're making good decisions and and working with the best contractors, uh, giving giving our taxpayers the best bang for their buck. Um, uh, I attended the rep commission, but uh, Kate covered all that. I don't have anything to add beyond um, just mentioning that this coming Sunday is going to be the town litter pickup. Um, hopefully good turnout for that. It's going to be 9 to 11. Uh, if the 10 day forecast is any indication, it'll, it'll be a little chilly that morning, but uh, looks like it'll be nice. Um, and we are going to have a couple little giveaway gift cards just to encourage friendly competition. Um, you know, silly things like uh, most useful item found or most number of masks picked up, um, that kind of stuff. So um, other than that, um, just a, a, another thank you to our administration, Bev in particular, who's really stepped up and, and made this an organized event, not like my uh, pulled together last minute, hey, who's available to, to come pick up trash with me? Um, that the past two or three have been. Uh, so this one will be organized. Um, that looks like all I've got for now. Thank you. Chris, do you, uh, uh, you had attended a webinar on the- uh, uh, Gosh, yes. Yeah, I did. And um, I know Doug sent around a little synopsis, but that was a really interesting uh, Synopsis. Um, it was it was uh, put together by the Council for Recreational Cannabis. I think is what that what that uh, CRC stands for. But um, they were mostly talking from a educating people who want to apply for their business licenses, um, covering some of the rules that have come out. Um, they've brought in uh, a conditional license, which does not hold the same level of scrutiny that the that the annual license does, um, which I thought was interesting um, because they're gonna give more priority to those conditional licenses where the municipality doesn't necessarily get to weigh in um, on where these go. And, um, and I believe they said, neither does the land use board. It's kind of like, hey, we're gonna have the plan down the road, but we don't have our place picked out. We don't have um, really our, our full ducks in a row. Um, and then that buys them more time when they are ready to apply for the annual license, they're more likely to get it. A another oddball item was if you have had past run-ins with law enforcement as a result of cannabis um, use in the past, you're also gonna get priority um, 
when you're applying for your license. Um, I, I guess that's part of the, the equity um, trying to balance people have been targeted in the past, but it just seems like a, a troubling area that they're going to kind of, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to speak without really coming from a position of knowledge yet, but um, we have a lot to dig into with our uh, subcommittee once we, we meet. I'm, I'm hoping the first week of November we'll start, but um, it'll be interesting. There's there's still so much not formed. Um, there are two, two of the licensing areas they just haven't put together rules for yet. So it, it really strikes me as so bizarro that this came to us to make decisions on so early in the process when, when the state doesn't know and we are their guinea pigs. So we'll see. But, uh, but thanks, thanks for putting me back on that, Mike. Uh, Mr. Ouellette. Uh, yes. Uh, the uh, Shea Tree Commission uh, was looking for places to put trees. And I did reach out to uh, Catherine Church Keeley, uh, the liaison for uh, the school board to the township. Uh, and she reached out to Mr. Mersinger. I did uh, receive an email back from Mr. Mersinger that uh, the uh, school is interested in taking four trees uh, to plant over at the Walnut Street School. Uh, and uh, he said, when the time comes to plant the trees that uh, the whoever the rep is from the shade tree should get a hold of Tim Allen, uh, who works for the school, uh, I guess, with the grounds over there, uh, as far as the places that they've chosen for the four trees. Uh, so we just want to pass that on to the Shade Tree Commission and uh, so that they can move forward as far as the uh, a spot to be able to put four trees out of the group of trees that they're getting. No trees at Pearson, huh? Uh, no, not at this time. Hmm. And that's all I have for now. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't have much. I was out uh, out of out of state visiting family the last couple of days uh, uh, last week, but uh, keeping in touch and into several different things uh, of note. Uh, had a short uh, um, video uh, meeting with uh, the assistant DEP commissioner this morning and uh, uh, the chief of uh, local government affairs for DEP and Mr. Fox. The four of us. And uh, our uh, the project uh, proposal for the Zerberg Seawall has uh, um, been uh, described to the DEP commissioner, and uh, we received a favorable response uh, from that office. And uh, so far, so good. So, uh, Mr. Fox continues to have some uh, detailed negotiations with uh, uh, the assistant commissioner for land use regulation and. Uh, so things are hopeful. So uh, I'll probably have a more detailed report at the uh, November meeting. So um, on that, we'll continue on. Consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted in a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Uh, are there any items on this very short consent agenda that anyone wants considered separately? Uh, or any questions? Hearing none, here we go. Resolution 2021-123, resolution authorizing the cancellation of various improvement authorization balances. Resolution 2021-124, providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue in the budget of any county or municipality pursuant to NJ, uh, should be an SA, NJSA 40A colon 4-87 chapter 159, public law 11985. Approval of minutes of August 16th, 2021. Approval of the department reports. Uh, approval of the consent agenda, please. A motion. So move. So move. Second. Ms. Patrick, second by Mr. Brown. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Ouellette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. 
Yeah. Mayor, before you move on on the agenda at this time, may I ask that for a motion, uh, Township Committee, if you uh, notice that in the consent there is no payment of bills, the CFO is on vacation, and our next meeting is not until November 8th, so I would ask for a motion to authorize the CFO to go ahead and pay any bills that become payable and due prior to the November 8th meeting. Uh, motion, please, for Mrs. Lurie's request. So moved. A second. Second, and the motion. Do uh, it all in favor. I would be fine. All in favor, please. Aye. 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 Very good. Good catch. Uh, meetings now open to the public for comments, questions. This is session two. Uh, as always, state your name and address, and we'll give you a little time to type in the chat, and the chat should be open for comment. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, Matt Bartlett, 1800 Second Street. Hello, good evening. Did that pile of dirt get moved? That pile of dirt got moved. The entire uh, area is paved. It looks great out there. That was uh, actually one of my items. That, yeah, the, the paving along uh, Second Street, River's Edge Drive, um, down to Lilac looks great. There, and I, I, there are a couple issues. I sent Harry an email this morning with some photos. Because uh, he wasn't going to be here. There is some water pooling in the middle of the cul-de-sac already after that rain um, that we had on Saturday night. So it looks like there's still a low point there. So I sent him a photo of that. He said he's going to take a look at that. And also the house is on River's Edge Drive uh, from where the uh, apron at the curb goes down uh, to the asphalt. There's a good two, two and a half inch um, difference between the curb and the asphalt uh, at the apron, uh, whereas the house is on Second Street, it's even as it you know should be. And uh, when I was walking around the other day, uh, I saw one of the residents, uh, Ed Klaus, and we were talking, and he, you know, he feels it's a trip hazard in front of his house. And looking at it, I could entirely see how that is. So I'm hoping uh, that Harry and the contractors could come up with some sort of solution for out there, because uh, it does make uh, you know, an otherwise great looking project to just you know, have some issues that shouldn't be. Yeah, I saw that with the uh, the lip, uh, the gaps there on a couple yeah. of the aprons. So yeah, some of them are real, really big. You know, some are down, you know, half inch, inch. But you know, two and a half, three inches, that's kind of concerning. Uh, you know, with all the money and time that they spent out here and you know, all the, the uh, demolition and whatnot, uh, hope they would have uh, kept an eye on that a little bit better. Um, the other thing, not to beat a dead horse to the earlier conversation with uh, the parking over by Lou's and um, the ice cream bar, but when you're coming toward or going toward the bridge from Delanco at the intersection, uh, with lose before you get to the intersection. The, the last space over there I, on that side, um, I would hope that could be painted as well. But if you mark at 25 foot, uh, so people know where they can park because coming from uh, like from the ice cream bar area toward the bridge, as you're getting up there, you do have a little hard time seeing the crosswalk until you're right up on there because there's usually a car parked really close to Franklin Street. And uh, I'm guilty of going to lose, you know, once, maybe even twice a day uh, when they're open. And, you know, I, I, I know it's hard to believe, Mike. Uh, there, I, you know, it, it is hard to see. Uh, someone standing in that crosswalk in front of Lou's as they're approaching there due to there's usually a, some sort of SUV type vehicle pretty darn close to Franklin Street. So if that could be painted as well while they're out there painting, I don't think that needs to change in ordinance because it's just a 25 foot. It's actually 10 feet, Matt. Is it 10 foot? Okay. It, yeah, because kinda... not, at the, it's not, not at the crosswalk. Okay. It's, you know, yeah. it's where the crosswalk is, 25 feet back from that. So it'd be 10 feet, but well, I can talk to Mr. Fenimore making sure that no one creeps up too close to that intersection. Yeah, because even with that, even with the ten foot, uh, that'd be helpful mm -hmm. marking that out because they are kind of like you know three, four feet away, which yeah. any right. additional um, distance could help there. Another. Uh, that is uh, all I have. Thank you very much, uh, Matt. When is Dice's next meeting? I didn't get that. Uh, we set that up. That's next Tuesday night, the municipal building. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it should be uh, eight p.m. Still, we're going to talk next week about making that back to a normal hour of 7 p.m. like most other meetings. Okay, thank you. Well. 
Any other public comment? Anything in the chat? Nothing in the chat, Mayor. All right. All right, hearing and seeing no other comments. Uh, session two of public comment is now closed. Status of uh, coronavirus disease, COVID-19, executive orders, uh, executive order CDC updates. I don't think there's anything new that's, that's come out. Uh, and review of COVID, current COVID response policies for municipal facilities. There's been no, no changes no. there from the state. state uh, no, no changes. Uh, we do have another uh, company coming out tomorrow morning to take a look at the um, the courtroom to be able to uh, bring that room to a hybrid technology uh, so that we can offer the in-person as well as remote at the same time. It's been hard getting, the, there's not that many companies that do this in the uh, area. There's you know tons up in New York, but, um, but we do have another company coming out and hopefully we'll get a uh, proposal from them and can move along with um, you know, getting that room updated um, technology wise so that we could offer both uh, hybrid and in-person meetings. And one thing I do wanna mention, if um, we move forward with this, I would like to before, I mean, if we get new acoustical panels, which we, you have to, um, is to maybe get some quotes for painting, painters. Um, that room could use some painting, use it uh, painting. And it'd be nice to get that done before we put a bunch of acoustical panels up and then we'd have to go back and try to paint around them. So uh, I'm working on that also. And um, so hopefully we can uh, get, you know, one or two, we have one proposal in. I'd like to get another one in. Hopefully this vendor tomorrow will be able to, uh, you know, uh, submit a proposal to uh, bring this room up to technology to be able to offer COVID um, hybrid and um, remote and in-person meetings. Any questions or comments regarding uh, our COVID, uh, COVID posture? I thought we were gonna talk about having our meetings at municipal and municipal building next month uh, we can but uh, uh we're noticed uh, that we're through the end of the year as being on uh, remote and zoom correct right but i think they can do a notice in 48 hours a public a publication would have to be sent to two newspapers uh changing um the format to in-person at 770 Coopertown Road, the location of the municipal building. If you were to change to uh, in-person meetings. But we'd still be uh, uh, wearing a mask in, in the building there, correct? During the meetings. The policy right now is um, masks inside the building. Well, that's a policy that we established. So, I mean, at the last meeting, you said we would discuss it at this meeting. So I was just wondering, is there gonna be a discussion or no? Well, that's what we're doing right now, isn't it? Okay, well. I, I think part of uh, one of the, the big points was uh, uh, the wider audience that we're able to uh, to get to in the Zoom uh, you know, remote format, which is obvious. And uh, uh, that the, the awkwardness or the difficulty, uh, if we go back in the room that uh, we'd have to um, prudence and, uh, and a good, uh, good practice would be to uh, uh, have a mask, you know, be, be masked in the room, you know, since it's a little more of a, um, a proximity and so forth. So it seems we can get uh, conduct our business uh, through Zoom, um, uh, maybe through the rest of the year uh, in this format and uh, uh, see what the new year brings. Can I ask Janice a question? If, with those, um, with the acoustical panels and hybrid, it, is that eligible for the, um, for the CARES Act money? No. That no. Was prompted by it? No. Um, oh. It is remarkably not eligible. Uh, we're hoping that they every day they expand 
eligible uses, but not the upgrades. I was really hoping we could, uh, you know, use the, some of that ARP money for um, for the room, but no, it does, yeah. it's not eligible. That's, that's so interesting, especially because we were able to use it for the for that window area that was put in. So, oh, well, just figured that out. Yeah, a lot of emphasis with the ARP money, a lot of emphasis on uh, stormwater resiliency, uh, sewer projects, stormwater projects. Um, you know, if you want to build a health building, you can build a health building with the money, but uh, public health building, but uh, not upgrades uh, to accommodate a hybrid uh, meeting um, platform. Thank you. We did budget. I mean, we did put some money aside in our capital budget, I believe, for that. Yes, Richard did budget. Um, uh, some money for um, the upgrades. Any other comments on the uh, on this this topic? Um, if nothing else, uh, uh, I would favor continuing in Zoom through the rest of the year. I just want to comment on the uh, the hybrid uh, contractor. Um, and we can't all put a laptop in front of us in the conference room. That's like I am here at my kitchen table, bring our laptops, our tablets, our phones. It, it's, it's about the sound system and those noise canceling um, microphones and the, the, the way the loops back into the room um it's it's but janice uh, before the COVID of march 20 we were in the building mm -hmm. we 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 weren't we we knew we had some acoustic issues but we were operating okay and you know to have to sit back and um you know watch this on zoom and uh, you know I, I don't know you know how i feel about it i do feel we belong there but i don't want to see that uh, spend a whole lot of money getting back into that mini like we're not going back in unless we have a, you know better acoustics and we have uh, zoom cameras and we're on uh, tv we're on comcast i mean I, I think the covid situation has really changed the face of the planet as far as business and the way we do things and um i recently got involved in a, a deal and people were screwing up and the excuse was the excuse, this is the excuse that I heard. Well, things got screwed up because everybody's working from home. That's got to stop. People got to go back to work. You got to fill them office buildings. I know people that have gotten the COVID and they did not die. Thank God. They're getting uh, like a severe flu. Uh, some have been close to being hospitalized, but we're, we're learning to live with it like we have other pandemics. And, um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I think we should have been in there a long time ago. So well, the, it uh, is convenient. convenient for me to sit here. It really is. But that's not what I signed up to do. The, the um, question of whether to come back to the municipal building is really separate from the project that I was tasked to handle and uh, to, uh, you know, bring the courtroom uh, you know, electronics and sound system and whatever was required to offer a hybrid and in-person as well as um, Zoom function or uh, remote function. You know, the right now committee's decision is to come back to the municipal building, then it would be in-person only. The, um, the hybrid, we, we just don't have the proper technology to offer. We tried it and it was um, a mess. Um, yeah. And particularly with um, planning board and the quasi judicial um, process of a planning board, but um, we don't have the technology and the sound and um, equipment in place to be able to offer both. But it's certainly committee's decision if you want to come back to the municipal building before we upgrade the municipal building, uh, but it would be in person only. Well, I, uh, I don't want to wear a mask. I don't think that's the answer to stopping this spread, but that's my personal opinion. I've been vaccinated. 
And um, I know people that have been vaccinated uh, who wore a mask and they still got the COVID like a second round. So I just think we got to move on. I know I might be the first one to get it. So, you know, <laughs> but uh, that, that would be my, uh, that's my feeling since you're asking. Appreciate it's not the end of the world though. It's not the end of the world. We still, we are doing business. Yes. We are getting the things done in town. Oh yes. Um, but uh, you know, that ended sooner or later. It's interesting. We actually took a look at um, what other municipalities are doing. And even to this day, it's still kind of a, you know, a broad range. You have some municipalities, the governing bodies are back in person, uh, in person only. Uh, Cause again, a lot of municipalities don't have the technology to offer a uh, hybrid and uh, they're fully open. And, um, and then there's other municipalities um, on the other side, they haven't opened yet. It's by appointment only. You do not come into the municipal building unless you're fully masked and it's by appointment. The doors are locked. Um, they're still meeting remotely. So it's, it's, there's not a one size fit all. Um, I know there's a lot of, um, a lot of the municipal facilities, uh, a lot of the government facilities, while they are open to the public, fully open to the public, you are required to wear a mask inside. That's one thing that came out from a survey that was done. But um, so any it's- Any comments on this? Again, my comment is that the Zoom, because we have more participation of folks and to John's point, we're still doing the town's business and taking care of things. Uh, I would stay with the Zoom, but as soon as we can, uh, do things from uh, town hall and have uh, public participate either through Zoom or whatever technology. Uh, I'm for going back into the, the municipal building. I'm okay with that. Uh, but again, it's just having the availability for the public to be able to uh, use technology to listen in or participate. Um, I, I just have one question, though. Um, I mean, I understand why we're doing this. Uh, I'm not against Zoom, but it was never my opinion that we were definitely doing hybrid. Um, we were looking into it, but we never decided that that's the way we were going to go. We were going to look into two options. One would be to update the room for the acoustics so that the sound system was better. And we were also gonna look into hybrid, but I never knew it was a definite that we were definitely doing hybrid. I didn't think that we approved that totally because we didn't really know what it would cost. Right, no, it is. It's, yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're just soliciting. Oh, okay, well, yeah. the way you're talking is like, we're not gonna go back into the municipal building until we can be hybrid. So that's what no. I misunderstood. No, that's not, that's not. Because uh, we may not be hybrid in January. No, we may not. We may never be hybrid. We may never be hybrid because of the cost. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, and I understand the availability for residents. I appreciate that too, because I was the one who would ask that we definitely extend it in September for that meeting regarding 200 ASH. But um, I don't see too many residents coming forth questioning anything now. So, I mean, I just, I, I just wonder if, if we're not, if we're not sure we're going to do hybrid, that you're kind of saying, well, we have to wait and see if we can do hybrid. And that doesn't, I, I don't know. I just miss, a, I misunderstood something along the lines. We're paying for a building that we're not using. Uh, I think it's a costly expense. The residents are paying for that, and I, I think just the building gets gets a lot of use every day. I don't know, if, you know, we have, we have a full staff that works there every day. You know, it's, I know, I know, I go in there myself, but we should. I just feel like we should be back there too. That's my feeling. I just feel that we should well, be back. Appreciate the input. Anything else on this, Chris? No, I have nothing new to add. I'll be ready when when the time is right, whether that's the new year or, or whatever, I, I would hope that we do go in a hybrid, um, in, in a hybrid direction, because 
you know, if we've learned anything from, from this pandemic, we need to be ready to pivot. And I think our residents have gotten used to the accessibility to us and it certainly feels more transparent. No one can ever accuse our governing body of, of doing anything untoward. Um, I, I got my my booster today, so I, I am ready to go back. But um, but I, I love this availability. And and then you know if I want to go back and hear, wait, did I actually say that during a meeting, or did John say that? Like the the meetings are now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, it, this has been great. So um, I, I'm I'm down with it for the rest of the year. Great. Uh, on that note. Uh... We'll continue Zoom through the end of the year. Um, correspondence, Mrs. Lord. Uh, there's no correspondence, but I will take this opportunity to remind everyone uh, new for this year for voting is uh, for the election is we have early voting and that actually starts this coming Saturday, the 23rd and through to the Sunday before election day. And the closest early voting location for our residents, our voters in Delanco is Willingboro uh, Public Library at the Willingboro Complex. There are, uh, of course, um, a total of seven early voting locations throughout the county, which um, our residents can go to any one of those. And again, that starts this Saturday and uh, there's more information on the website. And um, that's what I wanted to mention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, discussion items, uh, let's see. Uh, 200 ash building demolition salvage issues for bid specs continued discussion. Uh, we had uh, uh, some suggestions or ideas to uh, for the uh, uh, shoe factory to retain uh, uh, some wall section or a corner or some bricks for a walkway or reconstruction of, of some kind of uh, uh, wall somewhere. And uh, I think that's the, the question was whether to uh, write that into the, the spec that uh, Mr. Fox is preparing for the demolition of the building. And uh, uh, if, uh, if we wanna move in that direction or obviously there's a, a uh, unknown economic part of that, that uh, if, uh, if a demolition contractor is trying to, uh, we've asked them to retain a, or leave a wall standing, then uh, that obviously uh, uh, changes their, probably their, their schedule or their plan of uh, uh, taking the building apart to retain that and so forth. Uh, uh, Leaving a pile of bricks uh, sufficient to, you know, construct a wall, a wall or a walkway is probably the easiest and least uh, uh, burdensome as far as uh, uh, economics and, and planning and so forth, and gives us probably the most flexibility going forward. So, um, what are the committee's thoughts on that, and uh, if that's uh, something we want to do? like the idea um, when uh, I think it was Liz that first mentioned to me about um, about adding that in to have a, a structure remain uh, to act as a monument and and I've been to parks like that and and I think it's a really nice testament and would would capture what the historical board wants to wants to see there more so than just a, a sign um, but from a cost perspective if if a brick pathway works just as well. I mean, it's not as flashy as a, uh, as a nice short up wall, but, um, but it's, it's definitely something to add in as an alternate. Um, the, the original, the, the original choice from the, the history board was to put bricks aside for a, for a sign, not for a walkway, it was more for signage. Um, so save enough bricks to make a sign. So my suggestion would be to get two alternative bids, one to leave the wall structure and one for a, um, an amount of bricks to build, to build a nice brick signage. I think Peter Fritz had even sent a couple of pictures of the sign, uh, which was built with bricks. 
And then of course the name of whatever we decide to name it or what we decide to do with it. So I would go with two al alternate bids in addition to the demolition to see what would the cost difference be between just salvaging bricks for a sign or salvaging a wall for more of a monument. But I mean, if you look back at Peter's correspondence, I'm sure it was a sign made of bricks. I, Liz, this was the wall. Did, have we uh, referred that material to the recommission parks? Uh, you know, do they have their sites on that property? Uh, do they have that in their plans? Uh, I, I definitely think the, uh, the ruins type of uh, look was interesting, but I, I think that may be beyond our, our realm for this town of, because of the maintenance issues and the growth, uh, certain species has to grow uh, up the bricks. Um, I, I'd be a little hairy, a little, uh, little far out, so to say, to tackle that. And I think you're gonna have trouble with bids uh, you know, I would say a, a, somebody to demolish, they're going to want to just, you know, f flatten it and haul it away. Saving bricks for signage or, you know, sign pillars is, should not be an issue. I, I don't know what benefit that's going to have to commemorate the shoe factory that, you know, here's a sign with uh, brick pillars that are holding it. Um, you know, as far as any relics that are left standing it could be worth more problems because it, if you took one of the corners all the way in the far back and you left a corner standing for, a, you know, vines or ivy to grow, uh, is it going to be safe? Is it going to be shored up? Um, I think we need to go out to bid uh, on, I, well, I think it's going to take quite a while before you guys decide, um, but uh, I, I think some of the materials we got from um, the EAB, um, interesting, but I don't see us in a, like a Fairmount Park or something like that, you know. One of the letters that came through was asking questions, and I thought that letter was Bill Matalevitz's letter was going to be forwarded to our engineer for comments and to see if those items... Have we heard back from Harry regarding that? Was that sent to Harry? It was. It was, okay. Because I thought that was important that Harry received that letter to see if we've met those conditions and um, if all of those areas had been justified in our demolition that we had sort of decided to do. Any comments, uh, Fern? To, to save some bricks uh, to memorialize them, I'm okay with uh, as far as going with trying to salvage walls or uh, any other part of the building. I just, from an economics uh, dollars and cents, uh, I think it, it would cost us more to do that and uh, again, just to demolish the building and save a few bricks. Uh, the long-term maintenance, uh, the issues down the road. Uh, so, at the, you know, I mean, we can hear what Harry has to say in response to the letter when he uh, comes to our next month's meeting. But uh, at this point, I, I think that just moving forward, taking down the building, save a few bricks, uh, you know, whatever that may be, 200, 300 bricks. Uh, if someone wants to uh, invest uh, in putting together a sign with those bricks, uh, I'm, I would be okay with. All right, so uh, we'll care continue this discussion on for the uh, next month when Mr. Fox uh, is in attendance and I'll uh, uh, remind him to have, uh, we'll go review uh, the letter that uh, was forwarded on to him and so forth. So uh, any other closing comments on this topic? Uh, just as far as uh, saving bricks, remember 
uh, you're you're going to get a big uh, backhoe. They're not taking it apart brick by brick. You know, you're going to get big chunks that they're going to, you know, dump in a dump truck. So just be careful. The the reality of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Halloween curfew reminder, Chief. Do you want to rehash that? Absolutely. Um, once again, the thirtieth curfew is nine o'clock, uh, which normally would be eleven o'clock. And on the thirty-first Halloween curfew, once again, is nine o'clock, uh, which would normally be ten o'clock. But um, Halloween is supposed to end at eight p.m. And I think the uh, for those that uh, may not want uh, uh, to participate, households that uh, don't want to participate in uh, trick or treating, uh, the signs are available on the township website. Uh, you can download that and uh, post that on your front door. And uh, but hopefully we'll have uh, good weather and a safe turnout and uh, uh, get back towards a, a little bit of normal. So. I, I did check with the church and they are not having first night this year like they usually do on Halloween for the kids. Anything else? We've reached the end of the agenda. Any other questions, comments? I do. Uh, Mason, this is Fern. Uh, yep. As we look forward to dealing with next year's budget, uh, I'd like to put the at least plant the seed out there for consideration. Uh, the field of dreams, we've over the number of years uh, have taken our open space money to do the maintenance, uh, the regular week to week or operation of cutting grass and fertilizing. Uh, I'd like to make that part of the budget and leave the open space money for open space, what it's meant for, uh, so that we can start building up the funds there. So if we need to buy more property on Hawk Island or to actually make some hard purchases, that we'll have those dollars there in the future. Right now, it's uh, we're taking those dollars and we're just putting into the field of dreams. And I think that the field of dreams now uh, is, just regular maintenance. It's part of day-to-day -day operation and it should be part of our regular budget. So I, I'd like to plant that seed out there. So when we get into the discussion of budgets uh, that we can look at that. Good idea. The, the, uh, it's also used for West Avenue. It's used for all the different um, parks, not just the Field of Dreams. Yeah. It's used to maintain and for maintenance on any park, uh, Gateway Park, the Riverfront Park, uh, Field of Dreams, West Avenue. So it's a good idea, Fern. I agree. Thank you. Uh, you know, especially now as we're looking into the added tax revenues that'll be coming in with the development and then with the uh, our industrial parks with the businesses that are becoming on board. So uh, I think. It should be, you know, we should be able to have the dollars now to make that just part of our operating budget. Yep. Good point. Good suggestion. And uh, let's see, I don't, uh, I'm not aware of any need for an executive session. If, uh, if there are no questions or comments from the committee, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well done. Thank you. John, that's a nice Aye. pumpkin. Did you decorate that yourself? Hey, happy <laughs> Halloween, everybody. Happy Beautiful Halloween. Pumpkin. Good night, everybody. That's it resembles my... you. Kind of resembles you, John. Oh. <laughs> Good night. It's Mr. Mayor here. This is the mayor. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it does resemble him, too. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife's uh, Halloween project for work. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.